back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast which we disassemble a film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe into one minute segments and then examine it in obsessive and occasionally hilarious detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco. Kyle. Yes, sir. Awkward conversations, hmm. which is not a topic uh, that we have refrained from discussing in the past. <laughs> the Marvel true. Movie Minute is very... Uh, interested in awkward conversations. When I watched this minute, I thought, now I, I have one of the weirdest pulls of, oh. of cinematic history. Okay. I, I'm going to talk about a little 1977 movie called Annie Hall. Wow. And the, <laughs> okay. It's, it's a Woody Allen film. I'm familiar with the film. I'm just I'm trying to think where you're going with this. So there is a there is a moment here where Woody Allen's character walks into, I believe it's the bedroom of the brother of Annie Hall, Dwayne Hall, right? It's played by Christopher Walken, an extremely young Christopher Walken. <laughs> they have one of the most ridiculously awkward conversations where he basically says, hey, well, you come in here. And then he tells him this story about, the, this is Christopher Walken's character. That, is it know, about, uh, about a gold watch and how it got? Oh, no. That's, now see, that's I could have... <laughs> Oh, okay. Different Christopher oh, Walken. It's, it's awkward conversation. Got it. Far darker. Okay. Because he talks about that, you know, sometimes I like drive at night and I have an impulse to, when I see headlights coming, to turn into the headlights. And I anticipate the explosion of sound and shattering glass and the flames falling out of the rising gasoline. <laughs> and it's a ridiculous thing. And Woody Allen, which I know Woody Allen, your mileage may vary, right? Yeah. yeah. Looks at him and goes... Yeah, I have to go now, Dwayne, because I'm due back on the planet Earth. <laughs> he, he exits scene. And then, of course, it leads right into a scene, which is kind of funny, is they need a ride somewhere. And, of course, his brother, the Dwayne, is the character who takes him on the ride. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> At night, and it's raining. Anyway, here's the thing is, you think of all these awkward conversations. There is a gloriously awkward conversation that is not just awkward, it's snappy, it's tight. The most hard cuts you will ever see in this movie, all in succession, <laughs> with two people talking, it's in this minute. It's a Marvel awkward conversation, but there's no towels and no razors yeah. here in minute 86 of Iron Man 2 from 2010, which is John Favreau, and longtime fans will know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, boy. Uh, for those of you, go back and listen to season two. Um, yeah. So, uh, we uh, pick up where we left off, which is uh, Tony Stark is working on uh, what will be come to know uh, out of continuity, they never say it in the actual movie, as the Prismatic Accelerator. Uh, and so that is his suitably pompous name for this thing, even though I think they only talk about it in the script and in the, the commentary. Uh, and uh, Agent Coulson is there. So while Agent Coulson is there, Tony Stark decides to put him to work. Uh, so they're they're having, and so we had talked last week about what it is that he needs in order to get this thing, and it, it is the uh, Captain America prototype shield? Or the Proto shield, <laughs> yes. Or, yeah, the... Uh, the the mock-up they did before they did the final one, uh, right? I don't know, the 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 designer's version of it, uh, and so he, so Tony Stark says that's what he needs. So uh, he doesn't. So, but he doesn't actually need it for what you think he needs it because the prismatic accelerator is off just by a little bit. It's just a little unlevel, so they they lift it up. So he says, "Lift the coil, go go, put your knees into it." There you go, and they slide the shield underneath it, and then drop it, drop it. And so then once the shield's under there, he puts the level across the top, and now it's perfectly level. So it's a little bit of a wah wah. Right. <laughs> but Captain America saves the day again. Well, uh, yes, he does. Iron it's Man not... would be dead without Captain America. How dare you, Civil War? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like he—it's not like he was handing him a lightsaber or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Yeah. Oh boy! Oh, we're all, all right. over the map today. All right. <laughs> we, we really are. I mean, seriously, what? Anyway, uh, so so he he puts the level back on and it's fine. Uh, he says perfectly level, and then and then immediately goes, "I'm busy. What do you want?" Like, <laughs> and I love it. Agent Coulson, the ultimate unrattled by anything. That's one of the best things that Clark Gregg does, is when he does so little, it's so magnificent. So he immediately answers, nothing. Like, <laughs> what do you want? Nothing. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> just, no, just so matter of oh God, only, like only Clark Gregg can get so much enjoyment out of so little. It's just well, perfect, pitch perfect. Because what you get is this this conversation begins very quickly. Tony thinks I'm gonna have a battle of disdain with you. Yeah. And it's gonna be a draw. Yeah. <laughs> There's no winner here. Yeah. Because it's two guys evenly matched on their disdain, right? But yeah, with a little bit of admiration, which I think is nice because you kind of see it come out in this. Yeah. And so Agent Colson says, I've been reassigned. Director Fury wants me in New Mexico. Now, for those of you who aren't are uh, not from the continental United States, our, our listeners abroad, first of all, yes. thank you for listening very much. I yes, hope you're welcome. enjoying our, our very boring Midwestern accents. Uh, <laughs> so New Mexico is one of our states, and uh, Rob and I are both located in uh, the Phoenix area, so we're in Arizona. It is one of our neighbors. So yes. to the east, we share a border with New Mexico. So uh, New Mexico, I thought was interesting. I, I actually didn't know why it was called New Mexico, because it always seems strange to me that there's a whole other country below us called Mexico. Why is one of our states, which they also share a border with, why is one of our states called New Mexico? So I always think... Why haven't you changed that over the course of time? When it turns out uh, I was entirely wrong about uh, why these things were. Uh, so they actually had the name before. Like, like they predate the country of Mexico. So this whole area was there. So I, I looked up Wikipedia. Uh, and so um, they say they New Mexico was New Mexico before Mexico won independence from Spain and adopted the name in 1821. So the name Mexico comes from... Uh, Natual, I think it is. Uh, yes. I'm pronouncing that correctly. And in language, it actually refers to the heartland of the empire of the Mexicas, which we know as the Aztecs. Correct. So this was in the Valley of Mexico from the, from New Mexico. Spanish explorers also used the term Mexico to name the region of New Mexico in 1563. Uh, so, and also... That was us too. So, like this state, like we are both. Neither of us are natives of of Arizona. Um, we are not. We were not born here. We moved here. But this was all part of that same area. So technically, we were New Mexico as well for a time. Like there was the. If you look at the original maps, it goes across uh, this way too. So I don't, I'm not exactly sure where between where Rob lives and where I live. Like which of us would have been on the other side of the border? But it's somewhere in that line. Right. Um, so yeah, they so that basically that it that before statehood, the name New Mexico applied to like all the different uh, types of thing of the U.S. New Mexico territory, and then when they then became part of it, uh, then they started carving it up. So I'm not I'm, I'm not going to give you all of my my fantastic uh, <laughs> New Mexico hot takes this time because uh, there's another film coming down the line that will be taking a lot more about New Mexico, and so we're going to save it for that. But I will tell you a couple things that I found that were interesting. Um, because there's a list of the officials of so, and and I, I did not realize that so many states had so many official things. So like their official bird is the Greater Roadrunner. Yes, it's true. The Roadrunner is an actual bird, and we have them here as well because we're part of the Sonoran Desert. So we're, we we share them too. Um, when I first moved out, when I first got to see a Roadrunner. I was really amazed. Like it was like, oh my gosh, they they're, they are pretty rare. Uh, so you don't see them. They're not like uh, like crows or sparrows where they're just everywhere. But you know, I, every couple months, I'll see a roadrunner go shooting across the road. And the, and, and the more you get closer to the outlying desert and away from the urban areas, the more you'll see them because they do not. They they're not like uh, coyotes. Coyotes will just you know come to your house. I mean, like, yeah, really, they will yeah, now. Yes, they will now. Yeah, they, they don't mind. And like, I, must, I remember when we lived uh, in the Estrella Mountains and at night you could just hear the coyotes in the mountains just howling to each other. Um, it was a whole different, you know, cultural thing from living back in the Minnesota, Indiana, the, the, the flatlands in the Midwest. Um, but anyway, so the, the bird, the official bird of New Mexico is the greater roadrunner, the official fish is the Rio Grande cutthroat trout. Their official flower is the yucca. Their official grass is the blue grama. G-R-A-M-A. Grama? I'm not sure. Any, any uh, people out there that, from Mexico, let me know if I'm mispronouncing any of this. Uh, their official tree is the two-needle pinyon. Their official reptile is the New Mexico whiptail. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Their official mammal is the American black bear. 
who's uh, made a comeback in the last couple of years. That's great. Yeah. And their official insect is the tarantula hawk wasp, which, if you're not a fan of insects, and I'm not a fan of insects, is a terrifying bug. <laughs> Just to see this thing, <laughs> it's kind of a nightmare of a bug. But, you know, like we shouldn't judge by appearances or things that give you hor- horrific nightmares. Uh, but, yeah, so that's that's the list I found of their official links. I didn't realize that we got as far as into grass and insects and trees. So that's a little bit of a little, little sneak preview of a discussion about New Mexico. Now, he does say, um, Tony, I think, responds with uh, yep. Land of Enchantment. Yes. Do you know this? Now, that is their slogan. Every state, again, for people who are international listeners, every state has a motto. Yes. The, Arizona. For Indiana, where I was born, it was the Crossroads of America. And my joke was oh. always, that's because no one stays there. They just pass on through. <laughs> Wow, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania yeah, was. Uh, Illinois, where I was actually born, uh, was the land of Lincoln. Well, yeah, because Lincoln was born in Illinois. Right. Pennsylvania's is virtue, liberty, and independence. Or yeah. when I was growing up, it was you've got a friend in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. For when I was growing up, Indiana's was Wander, Indiana. Yeah, it's oh, those were better times. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Arizona is the Grand Canyon state. It's pretty simple. Yeah, uh, but he says this. He goes land of enchantment. Well, this yeah. is the motto of New Mexico. the The phrase comes from a uh, a book from 1906, Lillian Whiting, called "The Land of Enchantment from Pikes Peak to the Pacific," uh, and it took about 30 years for that to really catch on. And then New Mexico was like, "Yeah, this this is cool. We'll use this as our motto." Uh, so I think it's even still on their license plates. Mm-hmm. It it's on a lot of stuff when you think of New Mexico. If you've ever driven through New Mexico, at least the northern part, let me tell you, some of the straightest highways True. you will ever drive. <laughs> <laughs> and in for, the one in the uh the day I spent driving through New Mexico, boy was there a lot of construction. Yeah. Like, I oh, know, yeah. <laughs> it's like for for these straight highways there were like everywhere I go, it was just like it was like, wow, beautiful mesas and Traffic cones everywhere and barrels yeah. everywhere I looked. Yeah, Albuquerque. There's always something yeah. ripped up. I, okay, so now I, listen. So those, and I'm saying this is a disparaging thing. We've got our own <laughs> oh, seasons no, of, of construction of around here too. But I don't know if that's a, a usual thing or just happened to be the luck of me passing through. So now, not to disparage all of our New Mexicans. Exactly. Now, if you're worried and you're like, guys, so what about the movie? <laughs> here's 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 what I want to remind you. This is a, we're going to finish this great conversation. Yes. Yes. And then a dial is turned, for yeah. lack of a better term. Yeah. So don't, don't, you're not missing out on anything. <laughs> We're not depriving you of, no. of hot takes on stuff, too. There's... You're fine. <laughs> so, I, Colson. I Col- yeah. Well, <laughs> no, before we get off of this thing, though, I find it interesting that, that this uh, travel guide, Land of Channel, wasn't actually about New Mexico. It was about the Southwest states. So, technically, Arizona is also part of the land of enchantment. I the, Yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> yeah, like it's it, like it covered Colorado, Arizona, California, and New Mexico, that whole sort of area down there. So it's like, we, we're, we also are kind yeah, of enchanting. Can, we got the Grand Canyon. We they got the Grand Canyon. It. They can they, have the Land of Enchantment. The they've, they've got Land of Enchantment. The they've got Breaking Bad. Like, they're, I mean, they're good. We have exactly. Raising Arizona. You know, See, we've all got our stuff. We got... Tatooine is in the hard That's southwest true. corner. It's That's fine. True. It's fine. There's a Sarlacc out there somewhere. Forrest Gump, you know, ran through Flagstaff. It's uh, anyway. Bill and Ted's uh, Circle oh K. Oh my God, here. we could just see? Exactly. Yeah. What was he going? Where's Colson going? He's going to New Mexico. <laughs> Colson goes to New Mexico. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tony says, Fantastic Land of Enchantment. Um, and Col- he goes, says, So I'm told, which I thought was interesting as a, like, the phrase, and then they're apparently like, Kind of made me think of, uh, you know, Tahiti. Oh. It's a magical place. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Land of Enchantment, so I'm told. Okay, interesting. Very dry. Right, very dry, yeah. Uh, so Tony says, secret stuff? Agent Colson says, something like that. Good luck. <laughs> and Tony's, bye, thanks. And like, it's very just like, very formal, like they're both not given much of anything. Right. Uh, and Agent Colson, as they shake hands, says, we need you. And Tony says, yeah. More than you know. And Colson says, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, we 
great. This is so great. Like it, we we obviously we had some fun in, in Hulk with the similar conversation, but these two are so good together. Yes. It, it's just like this little it, this is a nothing scene and yet this is the best this is the best like conversation we've had in like probably the last like 15 minutes. Okay, that's what I think is amazing is this is a nothing scene. This is yeah. literally just a scene to fill up to where explain Coulson's exit. Yes. Right? Why is like that in the rest of this movie? Where is he the, during the last thing? This is the reason why. This and is also, the only purpose of, of this. Of course, setting up the next film. Right. And setting up some other things. Yeah. On top of that, you almost, because we've seen this earlier in the movie where they've explained things in a, like when, you know, when, when uh, Natalie is leaving a scene and she just has this moment, they almost didn't even have to explain it, but I love that they do it because, because this conversation is so great. And for two reasons, yes, it is a contest of disdain. Mm -hmm. However, there's also respect. And what you got to love is, is Coulson giving him the little look, we, we need you. Like, don't like, seriously don't mess don't mess around right like and plus we literally could use everything you are your smarts your you all that you are and of course tony not being one to take a full compliment <laughs> humbly has to basically up it by yeah more than you know yeah. and then you have colson just like nah not yeah. that much yeah. right and just walk yeah. away the other he's thing like, that's beautiful he's like, about... I met Captain Marvel. You're not that big yeah, of a deal. Yeah, exactly. I already know. <laughs> I know what's going on here. Um, okay, and then I really just love the way it, it, this is shot with so many hard cuts back and forth, back and forth, yeah. that the editing is matching the rapid fireness of the delivery, which even just makes it... It ups the humor. It Not only does it up the humor level, it ups the performance level. Because yeah. if you had shot this with maybe just like two or three hard cuts... This would have had a totally different feel. And I think it just is a, you know, a really awesome, awesome character moment for both of them. Really says way more, communicates way more than what you would normally think in a simple conversation. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Uh, and then, and that is Colson's exit. Like he, and then, but that's not a picture wrap on on Clark Gregg. We're going to oh. see him again, so we yes. have to do a big send off for him there too. But uh, but as far as he, he's exiting the Iron Man two story at this point, so Correct. there there will be no help coming from uh, Agent Coulson. Uh, and then at that point, Tony goes back to building. Uh, so he like they fire up the Tom Morello music again, and uh, we see him go right back to getting his uh, prismatic accelerator uh, lined up and everything. So we see, I don't know, various things of him lifting, toting, moving, uh, putting in. We see the actual prism. So he actually puts in the prism and, and lines it up. Well, he thinks he lines it up. Uh, right. <laughs> not you know, Tony hasn't done a lot with uh, bouncing light, so perhaps he uh, doesn't really understand the the nuances of uh, focusing a, a laser beam. He well, we'll see this in the next minute. He he, look, yeah. he spent all his time with the level. He's trying to level this. You know, yeah. probably looks like a two hundred foot circumference. You know, uh, you know, particle accelerator. Here's something I think is funny: is now when you look at all this. It's all the same workshop. It looks a little bit more messy with a lot more stuff going on in it. Yeah. You see all of this conduits that are creating this accelerator. There's now this, this singular white metal, and it's kind of neat how all the conduits are black or a dark color. Mm -hmm. The area where the actual focusing is done with the prism is white to really draw your attention to it. This is a very highly technical instrument, right? <laughs> and, it's, and it's involving a prism, and a prism is, is, a, is a refraction device. Yes. He's not using gloves. He's just using oh his hands. Oh my gosh, I didn't think about that. He he puts it in. Okay, now I love this part. Always clear your optics. He wait, he puts it in with his hands and yeah. then to push it in, he full on fingers to glass oh. pushes it in and I oh went, gosh. dude, have you ever changed a halogen light bulb before? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Yes, dude. you think it makes me flash back to my retail days. <laughs> You can't do that. No, you can't do that. I mean, has he never seen Real Genius? You always have to clean and check your optics. It just, there's a part of this, the tactical, again, the tactical side of this just went, yeah. no, dude, don't do that. Like, like, I can buy the rest of it, but like, 
<laughs> you gotta keep this stuff clean, man. Yeah, you, you should have had at least a, a chamois or some sort of cloth. Like, you didn't need yeah. to have, like, gloves on, but man, no, you don't do that. Anyway, he puts it in, he aligns it. We get our first shot of him looking at, as he's obviously trying to eyeball this, as you said, mm-hmm. We see what appears to be this big metal cylinder with a tri- with an um, upside down triangle in it. Yeah, that's true. Which yeah, is big. Like this, this, yeah, exactly. This this big sort of mounting bracket, like this right. real with really heavy metals around, and a bunch of cords coming off of it to, to feed power into it. Apparently, uh, and they yeah, mounted in the center in the center of this uh, accelerator that he's created. There, interestingly, we don't see sort of the the hub of this loop. Because oh, there has right. to be a starting point, right? You know, where like he's feeding in the energy or the or the photons or whatever it is. I mean, like this thing. We're we're into Marvel science here, where they're just like, woo! Like <laughs> things are just gonna happen now. Like we're right. not gonna try and make up any. You know, this is this is the vita rays part of this. How does repulsor work? Eh. Like, but <laughs> that, that's where we're at with the, we're just going to build a thing and then the stuff is going to happen and then other things will happen because of those things. Science! So as we see him, so he places that prism in, obviously that's crazy, use gloves. But, um, okay, a really interesting thing happens. He then goes over to activate a, uh, basically looks like a key that he inserts into this like big like server box or whatever that has, looks like maybe it has a big screen in front of it. Yeah. Something I thought was really interesting is there's two things you see when it zooms in. One, this has got a serial number and sort of like a, um, you know, like a equipment uh, notification label that says G Technology Inc. G Technology is actually a, uh, a known trademark of Western Digital. Oh, so I okay. didn't know if that was actually something. I've used many of their hard drives. Right. Oh, of course. Well, okay, because here's the really crazy part. If you stop it and look at the key that he puts in. It's not a key. It's a USB thumb drive. <laughs> and it's one of those crazy looking ones that, you know, back around when this was being filmed, mm-hmm. th- they were much bigger. Thumb drives were way bigger than what we remember. And we've had interesting conversations about thumb drives. Yeah, I was going to say, season. I, do you think this one looks like it could be swallowed? No, it does <laughs> not. Because it's enormous. And it has, it actually does look like a key. This looks like one I think that maybe Lassie or. Or oh, yeah. maybe Western mm-hmm. Digitals had made around this time. It was hard to see because I couldn't. You, it's so blurred. You have to get right in to know it. But you can definitely see this is a, this is a USB drive. This is not a key. So interesting. The prop people. This is what yeah. they chose to use. Uh, maybe he's giving some sort of. Maybe it's it's some sort of key that has a, a an algorithm that mm. that's what has to enable the whole system from starting up. That would make sense. That he's would making it super secure. So then he goes, and yes, as he's getting ready, we see the lights of the particle accelerator starting, and Tony does something interesting. He takes off his outer black T-shirt, revealing the tank top underneath, and I guess we are, we're going to get witness to Tony's upper body strength. We Yeah, we see him uh, line up towards whatever this thing is, uh, and then we have uh, Jarvis then says... Initializing prismatic accelerator. So I guess I was wrong. I guess Jarvis is actually the one who says it. Like Tony doesn't say it, but Jarvis says it. Um, and so then, and then we see uh, like a basically like a, a like a plumbing wheel, like a big metal wheel, like you'd have on the side of a submarine or something, is at the top. Uh, and then he, like that's what Tony is using to uh, redirect the energy or, or something like that. We see him like there, you know, shirtless. We get with the the. Uh, you can see the arc reactor in his chest, and he's got like his uh, his black t top. Is that what's the? Oh, it's a tank top. Tank, tank top. top. Tank top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, again, I couldn't remember the actual like the official fa- fashion name. Yeah, for not it. the not the slang. Not no, the slang not the term. slang. I knew the slang one. I get. I'm not. I'm not going to. I knew. That. I knew you were trying to figure out. What's the, I know. I'm calling it by that. <laughs> no, because yeah, because you know, because people who worked in tanks wore them, so that's why yeah. they're tank tops. Yes. Um, because I knew somebody, I actually know a, a, a soldier uh, who uh, was part of a tank crew. And he's like, yes, we wore tank tops inside the tank because it got really hot inside yes. the tank. So I'm trying to think, I'm like, can I tell any of the stories he told me? No. No. Because <laughs> dudes being dudes, super yeah. stuff gets super gross. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> so meanwhile, in this display of manliness, uh, we see then uh, 
like uh, RDJ rocking the gun show. Uh, but uh, we're we're gonna it, it just begins here, so we're gonna talk more about that uh, in the next minute because that's when we really get. This is just the prelude. Uh, the real show is in '87, uh, so you don't want to miss it. But the majority of what happens here in '86 is the uh, is the the conversation, the super rocker conversation. So I challenge you, listener, what is your favorite movie awkward conversation? I want to hear about it, and I want to hear about it on Discord. We have our very own Discord server. We have a very own Discord channel uh, for Marvel Movie Minute. I want to see people popping in. And the thing is, let's do it for the people who haven't listened to the show. Just drop it in. Don't say, yeah. hey, I know you asked for this thing. Just say, like, my favorite conversation was from, you know, the American president or whatever it is that you have and put it in there. Don't even, no prayer at all. Because I'll know, Rob will know, and you'll know, and that's all that matters. Exactly. Let people be confused. And all, and we'll glory in the awkwardness. That's right. Uh, so, nextyear.com, uh, if you scroll down to the link, there's a button there for uh, Discord. Click on it, join our community, uh, hop into the Marvel Movie Minute, and, uh, and we'll be there. So, I want to hear from you. So, uh, Minute 87, the uh, Prismatic Accelerator will finally get accelerated. Uh, we got Tony Stark's gun show to look forward to, uh, and some, uh, some interesting uh, factoids about uh, stuff that's, that's being used here. Uh, and then, what the heck is going on with the Magical Triangle? You'll only find out if you're here for Minute 87. Don't miss it. Enough said. Bye. Bye.